Welcome to the Wellness Plus Podcast, brought to you by wellnessplus.tv. I'm your host, Karina Rachel, and I'm joined today by Jules Harrison. She is an organizational and well-being expert. She's an author and specializes in teaching people to have more powerful and satisfying relationships. So thank you so much for joining me here today, Jules. Thanks for having me here again, Karina. In the previous podcast, we were talking about the biggest relationship mistakes that so many of us make. And in this edition, I wanted to kind of delve into um, our more personal relationship with ourselves. Mm. And if you have some information you can share on how we can just stop sabotaging ourselves, um, how we can be more effective and hopefully, you know, just kind of overcome some of these struggles that so many of us face when we're trying to take on uh, maybe a new exercise regimen or start some kind of new healthy habit. This concept of self-sabotage seems to come up over and over again. So I'm hoping you can maybe shed a little light on this for us. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> well, I think it's interesting because when people are scanning around for information on the internet, a lot of times um, they're single, mm -hmm. right? And looking for relationship. And so they really put a lot of focus and attention on this kind of ideal person that they hope will come in. And then all of a sudden their entire lives will just fall into place and everything mm. will be perfect and birds will be singing and rainbows and bunny rabbits, right? Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of time in that place, but really the most powerful relationship that you have access to is the one with yourself. Mm. And learning how to apply the partnership principles to your own life and to the relationship that you have with yourself, you know, uh, Young has this um, this concept of the many selves within the self, and mm. you may have heard people reference um, your inner child, right? Like that's a real entity that lives within ourself, mm. and when she's upset about something, that right, that will get in the way and mm. sabotage what we're up to, and so the more that we can. Um, make friends with ourself and really partner with ourself. So in the last episode, we talked about the difference between relationship and partnership. Mm -hmm. And I, I look at partnership defined as two people in this situation. It's yourself <laughs> with yourself, mm -hmm. the many selves within yourself. Um, two people who are up to something together, mm -hmm. who've chosen to be on the same side or same team. Right to be up to something together that they couldn't do on their own. And that is so true. When you don't have your whole self on board mm -hmm. with what it is that you're up to, whether it's losing weight or getting into shape or going back to school, right? Whatever it is mm -hmm. that this higher thing that you're aspiring to, if you don't have all of yourself on board with that, yeah, it shows up as sabotage. Mm. And then that so easily becomes the excuse or reason to develop the belief that I just can't do this. Right. And so going back to the, the episode where we were talking about the things that we do in relationships that mess them up, and we make up stories right? We create expectations or assumptions. We do it with ourself all the time as well. So we'll look for evidence. Our brain will look for evidence to support that. And if it's that I can't do this or it's bigger than I am and I'm not mm -hmm. strong enough or smart enough or, right? Like we have all these reasons that will get in the way. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, the partnership principles are a beautiful thing to employ when you are up to creating something more in your own life. Mm -hmm. So in terms of those uh, big relationship mistakes, you know, we talked about um, 
making assumptions, Mm -hmm. having unspoken expectations of things. So what would be an example of, you know, maybe how, you know, with between two people, I think it's very clear how one person could have an unspoken expectation or assumption that the other person should know this thing or that. Um, But what's an example of how that sabotages us in our relationship with ourselves. Yeah. So there's a part of our brain. Um, I, you know, I have a teacher who calls it your bitchity cricket and I have another, you know, friend and teacher who calls it your ideal woman, right? It's this voice that we have in our head Mm -hmm. and we think everyone should perform in the way that she thinks it should happen, right? Mm-hmm. Are you hearing the shoulding that is coming out of my mouth, <laughs> right, right. right? So we should all over ourselves all the time. And it's really gross. <laughs> it's really gross. So yeah, the shoulds that we apply to ourself, like, um, you know, I brought this up before we started recording and I said, right? Cause I, I could tell that I had, she was talking in my head mm-hmm. and starting to make up the story that i I didn't have enough stories for you, didn't have enough examples. <laughs> and so I know better to be in partnership with myself to mm-hmm. create more clarity. So I just asked, did I have enough stories for you in that episode that we recorded about relationships? Mm-hmm. And, and I was open to what your answer was. Um, that was me being in partnership with you and with myself because I really do... I love doing my best. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to do something, I want to do my best. It's the problem comes into play when she starts talking and the way that she thinks it should be is perfect. Right. And the game of perfect is a dumbass game that can't be won. Right. It's so unattainable. It, is, it doesn't even exist. Perfect doesn't even exist. So if that's what you're up to, oh, it's a life of misery. Right. Nobody ever gets any kudos or to be able to feel really good about what they've completed because it's never enough. Mm-hmm. It, it can't be satisfied. Right. So that would be probably my number one thing to employ is notice when you're playing the game of perfect Mm -hmm. and just quit be a quitter be a quitter (laughs) the one time you should be a quitter (laughs) absolutely is is yeah change the game Mm -hmm. because here's the thing it's your game you get to make up the rules right you get to make up the rules So have them be rules that you can, like, little tiny wins Mm -hmm. that you can really acknowledge and appreciate yourself for having stuck to and accomplished. So so this idea of playing the perfect game Mm -hmm. versus setting up tiny little wins for yourself, do you see that in... Is that something that you prescribe to your clients? Definitely. You know, in my health coaching sessions, one of the things that I see just time and time again is, you know, exactly what you're saying. People have this perception of what they think they should be doing or how they should be eating or whatever. Um, And there tends to be a bit of a disparity between that idea of perfection and what's really realistic for most people. Um, So probably one of my most common recommendations to people is let's set out our goals. Let's be very specific and tangible about what they are. So we're not making a goal like, I'm going to eat better. I'm going to do this, (laughs) right? Something that's very vague and unmeasurable. We want to have something that's more tangible, like I'm going to start drinking one extra glass of water a day or eating one extra serving of vegetables a week Mm -hmm. or something that they can... Something you can measure. Something you can measure, something that when you do it, you can put a little check mark by it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then most importantly is that these goals we come up with are reasonable for you. These are Mm -hmm. things you can really see yourself doing. Um, And, you know, even for myself as as a health coach, you know, I know that's what's realistic for me 
is not necessarily my ideal of what I think would be the perfect way to eat mm-hmm. or et cetera. Yeah. Um, because by and large, I just recognize that, you know, what is realistic is very rarely the same as that little ideal that we come up with in our heads. And yet we fixate on that idea of perfection. Uh, we measure ourselves against that idea of, of perfection. Um, and we're always falling short. Because, as you said, you're never really going to be able to attain this thing that, you know, really, exist. really no one eats perfect all the time. Right. Nobody is constantly perfect, you know, so-called perfect in their diet or their health regimen or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I, so there are a couple of words that I really encourage people to, well, there's probably a whole frickin' dictionary of words that I would like to eradicate from their language. And one is should. Mm-hmm. Um, just stop stop shooting on yourself. Which would actually make a great uh, little t-shirt or coffee mug. <laughs> I'm sure it exists. Yeah, yeah. I will no longer shit on myself. I will not. So, yeah, stop stop doing that. And, and then just stop playing the game of perfect because perfect doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's not attainable because it's, it's an illusion. It's a hallucination, which was something that we talked about in the last podcast of Mm -hmm. how, so we hallucinate or make up a story that's really a distorted version of reality. And if we can recognize when that's happening, Um, We can hear when that voice has set the bar so high that you can't even see it anymore. Mm -hmm. You just can't win. It's a game that can't be won. And inside of that, another word that I would love for people to just stop using entirely is the word try. I'm trying to lose weight. Oh, well, I'm going to try and go back to school again and Mm -hmm. get my degree or Mm -hmm. get my advanced degree. I'm going to try to win a million (laughs) dollars by holding my breath as long as I can, right? Like (laughs) trying doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. We're either doing something or we're not. And so playing the game of trying is another game that you you can't win at. Mm -hmm. You're destined to fail, Karina, would you try to raise your right arm? (laughs) No, you're raising your right arm. You fail. (laughs) You know, we're either doing it or we're not. And really nothing happens in our life until we decide to do it. Mm -hmm. And part of that also is celebrating our wins. Yeah. Really being mindful of, of... Holy crap, Karina, you just raised your right arm. You just (laughs) raised it. And celebrating it. And when we do that, what we're actually doing is building a new neural pathway in our brain to the I I can do it. And here's evidence of it. Mm -hmm. Remember how um, I'm always talking about how the brain is really built for efficiency and saving energy Mm -hmm. because it's concerned about our survival. So at any moment, we want to make sure we have enough energy to outrun the tiger, right? right? And so the brain is built for efficiency, not accuracy. And so in that regard, you, you want to celebrate, you want to make some noise and put some energy and enthusiasm behind all of the wins that you, Mm -hmm. you make because the brain is, is going to remember that, like, oh, that right. works. Right. Do that again. Mm-hmm. And so at first, whenever you're, you're doing anything new, it's kind of like, I like to think of it as like a, barely a path worn through the long grass, like a hiking trail in its mm-hmm. very rough beginning <sighs> stages. Right. And the I can't, you know, the I can't brain or the doubts or the questions that we have, um, that's like a three lane super highway. We've been doing it our whole life. And here's mm-hmm. this new thing that we're going to do that we're going to master. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a dirt path. And the more that we use it, 
now this one starts to turn to rubble and the grass starts growing up in the cracks of the pavement. Mm -hmm. And then this one starts to slowly over time and repetition develop its lanes and now it's become, you know, right. a, an 80 mile an hour highway that mm -hmm. you can zoom to. And so what that is, is creating new neural pathways out of your primal brain that's all concerned with survival mm -hmm. into the prefrontal cortex, into this area of, of being able to respond more quickly mm -hmm. and, and have situations where you're, you're succeeding. Right. It's not as hard anymore. You don't have to think about it as much or expend as much energy because the brain loves to be efficient with energy. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're right, um, in that we, you know, we get very, very stuck in our habits, um, and throughout, you know, certainly our, um, you know, schooling and stuff as children, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, kind of reinforcing that idea of doing something right, doing something wrong, this idea that, you know, we um, compare ourselves to other people. We're starting very at a very young age to create those thoughts like, you know, I'm not good enough or I'm not as fast as that person or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, and as much as that um, in a way propels us to improve ourselves, um, it also starts to, you know, handicap us in a way because then we're always just looking toward that higher bar trying to compare ourselves to someone else or even comparing ourselves to ourselves, where we just feel that we're never good enough. And then it starts this kind of continuous feedback loop of what you were saying earlier. I can't, I should have done this. I should have done that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think you've described perfectly the game of perfection mm -hmm. because when we see other people do things, when we see people succeeding, we think that it just came really easily to them. Mm. And, and because that's, that's that part of the brain that's, that's observing it. It's mm -hmm. the, the ideal woman who sees only this level of perfection that doesn't really exist because that person was you. They had to start at square one. Right. And when they first started, it wasn't easy. And it was just through repetition and tiny little wins along the way mm -hmm. and really acknowledging, acknowledging and appreciating themselves. So these are all things that, that we can do for ourselves mm -hmm. and noticing the, the, the language that's happening inside of our own head. Mm -hmm. We will speak to ourselves in a way that we would never in a million years, speak to another human being. Mm -hmm. Never. Like, we can say some really, really horrible, discouraging things. And as much as we would like to think that the world is dangerous and people are mean and out to get us, we're really the one who's who's doing it and saying those horrible things. Yeah, our little inner critic yeah. tends to be much more critical than most other people are of us, you know, we're more critical of ourselves than other people are. Um, and it's very, um, you know, debilitating in the sense that once you get kind of trapped in that idea of, um, you know, these expectations and that you're not good enough and you are just, uh, it's, again, that, that snowball effect. Um, and in a very physical sense, the neurological connections that you are reinforcing over and over with those negative thought patterns and just general um, overcritical uh, judgments of ourselves, um, we end up setting ourselves back mm -hmm. 10 steps for each yeah. time that we do it. And I just really loved uh, your analogy of, you know, starting to walk down a different path. And that when you are first starting to try and, um, you know, have more positive self-talk, 
being less critical of ourselves, thinking of I will do this rather than I will try to do this Mm -hmm. Um, at first. Or just I am doing it. I am doing it. I am doing it. (laughs) And it might just be, you know, tonight I didn't eat an entire carton of ice cream. (laughs) I only ate, you know, half the carton. That is a big accomplishment. Right? That's a huge accomplishment. And you're doing it. And you're giving up the gallon of ice cream a night Mm -hmm. because you you only ate half. That's a win. That totally counts. And I'll stop banging on the table with my arm. (laughs) That's a win. It totally counts. You are actually doing it. Give yourself credit for that. Mm -hmm. Right? Notice in your life how stingy you are with acknowledgement and appreciation Mm. with other people and especially with yourself. Right. Because I think that you're right, that by and large, when we look at all of our different relationships, those with the other people in our lives and that with ourselves, um, definitely, you know, we are so hard on ourselves, Yeah. you know, in all of these different areas. Um, so, you know, we talked about do there, you know, there is no try, there's only do. Um, and trying to kind of let go of these, um, inclinations or patterns that we end up being stuck in over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So trying, shitting on yourself, you know, playing the game of perfection, mm -hmm. playing the game of trying, just noticing, starting to develop the awareness of what is my experience. So you talked about what it was like when you're not winning Mm -hmm. and when you're making up all these stories and how really depressing and debilitating it can become. And when we believe the stories, when we believe the hallucinations Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think that that is, is really an awesome example of when we were talking in the, in the previous podcast about what we do in relationships that mess them up. Mm -hmm. And, and it's the ability to not hold your space, right? To not be accountable for holding your space. Mm -hmm. So you might have heard people recommend that you go to, you know, you go to war against the ego, you go to war against the the voice in your head, that critical voice, and eradicate it. And this whole idea of human spirit and human animal, um, we talked about it in that podcast, and I'll just reiterate now for those who haven't seen it. So we have like two experiences of what it is to be human. Mm -hmm. We have your primal brain, your amygdala, that's concerned entirely with our survival. And it causes us to react to life. It also causes us to be in relationship with people in an adversarial kind of way. Mm -hmm. Like, are they on my side, right? We'll protect ourselves and not um, reveal our truth because then they might see that as a weakness. And then Mm -hmm. they, right? So we we have this experience of separateness and that people aren't on our side. And we also have this experience of human spirit or the prefrontal cortex. It's this ability to choose, not just react, but to actually look at the situation Mm -hmm. and choose a win-win. And we can apply that in our relationships, in our love relationships, with our kids, with our boss or our employees. Mm -hmm. Like it's so applicable in any relationship that we have, but especially with ourselves. So if we're going to become friends with the bitchety cricket or the, mm-hmm. you know, this ideal woman in our head, how can we do that? And so one of the ways, and I, I actually really love this because this is employing your imagination and your creativity. And the mm-hmm. way that I do it is when I notice she's kicked in, I feel in my body um, like, you know, that that weighted blanket that they put on you when you go to the dentist Mm -hmm. to get x-rays, it Mm -hmm. feels like that, right? The whole world just feels like I'm moving through sludge. Everything feels harder. Sometimes I might feel like 
a headache coming on mm. or really, really tired, like just exhausted, tired. Right. And when that's happening, what I've started doing is using that as my red flag of, oh, I've completely bought into whatever it is that she's shooting on me about. Mm -hmm. And then I sit back and I take a deep breath. And I poof out my bubble, my space bubble. So my responsibility and what I'm accountable for is holding my space. And when I'm listening to her and believing what she says is true, I've collapsed my own space. And so the way that I have hacked into that is I notice it in my body. Mm -hmm. I poof out my space. So big, right? So big that I can actually put a couch inside of it. And I like to welcome her. Like the Tonight Show, like, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my ideal woman. Come on in. Have a seat. And so now she's not on top of me squishing me. You know that feeling? Mm -hmm. Squished, like I can barely breathe. Now she has her own spot over here. I've served her a cup of tea. Let's have a chat. What's going on with you? Mm -hmm. I've noticed you've been really loud lately. Is there something I'm not noticing? What do you want me to know? Right? Mm -hmm. It's on our side. She is there for our survival. That is right. a freaking gift. That is a gift that I don't have to spend all my mental energy on just remembering to breathe. Right. So if we can know that these many selves within ourself are all there on purpose, mm -hmm. to serve a purpose, right. and it's to keep us alive. Not necessarily thriving, <laughs> but alive. Mm -hmm. And then we have the ability to create that super highway to the prefrontal cortex to really thrive in life. Mm -hmm. And just being more conscientious of everything. Uh, but I loved what you said about letting go of the um, adversarial relationship that we have with that voice. Um, because you're right, the whole purpose of that, you know, kind of inner critic guiding voice is to try and um, help us. Stay to try safe. and push us forward. Yes, stay safe, exactly. Um, and so... You know, this idea that, you know, rather than working against it or rather than feeling like we're fighting ourselves, mm -hmm. um, that we would uh, very conscientiously say, OK, well, how can I use this voice and use this information that it's giving me for uh, for positive, right. for, for positivity, for improving myself or exactly. improving this particular situation? For what you're really up to. I'm really up to this thing, and now can I enroll that part of me to get on my team? Mm -hmm. That's being in partnership with yourself. And so sometimes that might show up as, as your, your little girl, right? Your wounded little girl who's afraid. Mm -hmm. And maybe what it is is that you're moving into something new too quickly, and and you need to go slower mm -hmm. and take smaller steps and make sure that you're checking in with her on the couch. <laughs> Honey, how do you, how's this feeling? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you doing okay? Do you know I got this? You know we're safe? Mm -hmm. Okay, will you stay on my side <laughs> <laughs> so that I'm not expending energy right. away from the thing that it is that we're up to, to mm -hmm. have a better and more fulfilling life and to feel more secure and confident in ourself and who we are and what right. we can provide in the world and what we can provide in our relationships and partnerships with people. Right. And I think that as we take that, um, you know, kind of simple guideline of just um, being more uh, specific and tangible with our goals so that we can celebrate our wins mm -hmm. because there's a very clear thing that we've done um, that rather than just trying to tune out that inner voice how could you actually give things for that inner voice to say wow great job mm -hmm. 
wow, yes. look what you accomplished. Yeah, thank you for um, noticing that I was about to pull my hamstring when I was pushing myself to go into the splits. Thank mm -hmm. you for noticing that yeah. and alerting me because that would have taken me out for six months. Right. And, and then I would have put on another 30 pounds right. meantime, right? And I think in general, you know, especially in the realm of weight loss, there's this... Um, you know, kind of idea, you know, you've heard it called the battle of the bulge, you know, it's all sort of, you know, kind yeah. of surrounding this, um, idea that we're working against ourselves. Absolutely. So and how successful is that? It is incredibly difficult. It is not sustainable. It is not a sustainable relationship. And it makes us miserable. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So choosing to be in partnership with ourselves mm. and employing these things of, um, you know, not, not buying into the stories, but actually making space, giving enough time space to allow for little tiny gains and celebrating those and mm -hmm. building up that super highway into this new way of being. And so all of these things that, that I talk about in our conversations together, they're not techniques. It's not a checklist that you can go through and go, oh, yeah, 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 you know, I did that. Oh, I did that. Oh, I forgot to do that. It's actually something that when it becomes a practice, mm. it becomes your way of being in the world mm -hmm. because you're no longer playing these games that can't be won. Right. And so can I share with you another Another thing that we can employ yeah, that makes, it's a huge needle mover. This is a huge needle mover. It actually pops up on my Facebook page every, you know, year. And I repost it again because that's how powerful it is. For 24 hours, stop complaining out loud and especially inside your own head. It is one of the greatest gifts that you can give yourself and it's one of the greatest gifts that you can give the people who live with you <laughs> or who are around you. Mm -hmm. Because we don't even notice how frequently we complain. I am definitely guilty of that. <laughs> yeah, how so? <laughs> um, I mean, I think the, the first thing that comes to mind is just um, I get frustrated at work, mm -hmm. you know, and I get frustrated with the you know, because so much of what we do is it's online, it's on computers, and there's just this, you know, there's always going to be technological difficulties. So I find myself over and over getting really frustrated that, you know, the internet's too slow, the computer is dragging, for some reason YouTube isn't working, and I'm trying to pull this thing up and it's not working. Um, and I, and it will kind of sour my, my whole mood. Mm. Um, and then, I, you know, sometimes I just have to kind of step back and say, wait a second, I'm not going to let the internet ruin my day. Right. I'm not going to let, you know, YouTube ruin my day or whatever it is. Um, because I realize how much those frustrations, um, start to impact every single action I'm doing and how I'm interacting with people. Mm -hmm. Um, and just my overall kind of, you know, level of, um, you know, I guess stress and frustration, so to speak, starts to become this domino effect on everything else. Yeah. So what's the complaint that comes up when technology isn't being your friend? This is not working the way it's supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fast enough. I mean, I think that in this day and age, everything we do is so um, just instant gratification. Mm -hmm. We want things to be fast. We want them to be quick. We don't want to sit in traffic. We don't want to have to wait for this web page to load. Mm -hmm. um, and it and it creates a lot of... Um, a lot of negative feelings, yeah. you know, and sometimes it's a very uh, real thing, like this thing's taking too long or I'm stuck in, stuck in traffic, I'm going to be late, and there's these negative repercussions. Um, but by and large, you know, I think that a lot of times, you know, maybe just sitting back, taking a deep breath, mm. saying, I'm not going to complain about this. Right. Yeah. Is actually maybe something that can be a really valuable way to just get through it. Yeah, and, and the way to start to create awareness around that and to build a new superhighway is just to notice when you're complaining and stop and breathe. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and another thing you mentioned um, in the previous uh, podcast was about, um, you know, part of our uh, kind of estrogen uh, driven psyche for women Mm -hmm. um, is, you know, that we tend to be warriors. We Mm -hmm. worry more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And so I think that the inclination to, worry about things, to stress out over things. Right. Time, right? Time. I'm not going to get there in time. I'm going to miss out on something. They're going to be mad at me, right? It spins off into Mm -hmm. this whole hallucination and you're sitting there in traffic and it really all gets triggered by, by the complaint or the should, this should be happening faster. Mm -hmm. Um, I have an expectation that it should take this amount of time and it's not taking that amount of time. Right. So yeah, it's right. It's this game that it doesn't produce anything Mm -hmm. good. We're just miserable. And then we show up and we're sweaty and grouchy. (laughs) Right. And that's pretty much the pace of the whole day. And the amount of energy required to shift out of that or to even be open to somebody else who might smile at us or like we probably don't even notice mm-hmm. because we're still caught in the hallucination and complaining about what happened on the way to work. Mm-hmm. And then even with complaints, we'll use it as a way of connecting with other people. Oh my God, the traffic today when I came, right? <sighs> and we'll start our day off that way. And so then we enroll other people in this. And now mm-hmm. they're on to thinking of examples of things that they can complain about. And that, that's how we bond. Right. And Misery loves company, right? Yeah. Or does it? <laughs> <laughs> or does I mean, it? Misery doesn't love anything. <laughs> yeah. So what can we do instead is notice. We can notice that that's what's at play. We can take a deep breath to reset. And I really get off on retraining our nervous system to receive pleasure in all of the ways that we're able to. I really believe pleasure gets a bad rap. And it's, it's actually our birthright. <laughs> and there are, so, like right now, I am receiving the pleasure of your beautiful smile. Oh. <laughs> and how lovely your eye color is with the color of your dress and <laughs> right like if if we're in the present moment mm. we're available to so much pleasure mm-hmm. so for me a hack when i'm driving cuz driving is stressful for me traffic right. is stressful for me i don't know anyone who it's not because it triggers that primal part of our brain that's concerned with our survival and driving Mm -hmm. is freaking dangerous. So that's normal. Thank you. That part of my brain for keeping me alert that this could be potentially dangerous. Thank Mm -hmm. you. And I'm stuck in traffic right now. Follow the pleasure. What would be enjoyable to me in this moment? Ah, I'm going to play my favorite song. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sing really loud because there's nobody around. (laughs) And that makes me really happy. Mm -hmm. I love singing loudly in the car. And I actually find it quite funny that when people are parked next to me, that they might look over and see me just rocking out. (laughs) I've actually had times where, you know, our windows are down Mm -hmm. and and I'm singing along. And then they, they, like kind of honk their horn and look over and then they kind of sing along with me and it's you know like all of a sudden there was a little bit of magic of connecting with Mm -hmm. a human being in the world Mm -hmm. and that came from from my awareness of of getting outside of the story of the complaint and you know how small your world gets when that's happening yeah we get very um kind of fixated and it's almost like the blinders go up to everything else and Absolutely. then all you can see tunnel vision is the traffic jam or the this problem or the dishwasher broke or whatever it might right. be um, because the bottom line is that there's going to be things in the world that don't work like they're supposed to or they break or they randomly just you know who knows yeah um so you know impossible thing to avoid all sources of frustration for the rest of your life what can we do find better ways to handle it 
And I love this idea of finding something to be grateful for in the mm. moment. Find something about the moment that is good. Yeah. Because chances are, you know, you have air conditioning or you have your radio or, I mean, if you have a car, that is something you should be grateful <laughs> for. Um, True. You know, so it's interesting how much we, you know, kind of become fixated on on what we don't have or what isn't working right. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of forget to celebrate all the things that are working right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And can I can I jump on that? Mm -hmm. That's um, an awesome thing to going back to the one of my hacks in in driving. And when I'm feeling anxious and stressed out is I'll find something pleasurable in my sensation. So one of the thing that's, things that's really easy, and you won't be able to see this if you're just listening to the podcast, but I will take my thumb and just slowly trace a line around my fingers. Try it. <laughs> just lightly. I was probably doing this a second ago without even realizing right? it. Right? <laughs> it's, you know, as babies, we have ways of soothing ourselves. You know, we used to suck our thumb, and while that's probably not something I would encourage you taking on now, because braces are very expensive, um, is, is this is, is just a really simple hack into the nervous system to mm -hmm. calm. Doesn't it feel calming? It's yeah. pleasurable. It feels sweet and loving to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's just a nice loving gesture that you can do, and nobody really notices. Right. It's not a big movement where you're, you know, giving yourself a full body massage in your car, <laughs> you know, something like that. But it's a very simple hack mm -hmm. into what's delightful, what's pleasurable mm -hmm. um, in this moment, what feels good, what would make me happy in this moment. And when we start utilizing those neuropathways in the brain and really acknowledging ourselves for doing it, mm -hmm. Right? That, that letting yourself receive the acknowledgement and appreciation of choosing something different, choosing to be in partnership with yourself. It's really one of the most loving things that you can provide for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the idea of these, you know, kind of seemingly simple little hacks like that. Yeah. Um, but you are so right in the sense that our um, pleasure centers of our brain, the reward pathways of the brain mm -hmm. are very, very strong. Yeah. Um, so for us to reinforce a reward pathway and start to weaken those more negative pathways of the, you know, self-critical, self-judgment, you know, the more that we uh, just practice doing those little things, whatever it is, if it's something, you know, tangible, like the little trick of, you know, um, this like movement of the thumb on the finger mm -hmm. while you're sitting in traffic, yeah. you know, anything that starts to uh, reiterate those neural connections and the mm -hmm. reward pathways so that when you make the conscious decision to stop complaining and you've recognized that you were complaining and going on this kind of negative thought pattern mm -hmm. and you make the conscious decision, I'm going to stop complaining. I'm going to do something different. Um, a little neurological hack like that, like, it's you huge. know, whether it's just slowing down and breathing more slowly. I mean, one of the, you know, probably easiest ways to hack our nervous system, so to speak, um, is just by extending your exhale. Mm -hmm. to be longer than your inhale, and that immediately signals to your brain mm -hmm. um, to go into that parasympathetic nervous system, that more restful, less uh, fight or flight exactly. part of the body. Yeah. Um, so you can literally, you know, I almost think of it like ironing something on. It's like every single time that you make that positive decision mm -hmm. and you reward yourself, yeah. especially with something physical like a slow, deep breath mm -hmm. or this little uh, hand movement I keep doing now. Mm -hmm. um, it's like you're ironing in that neurological pathway um, for making that more positive choice. Yep. And then each time that you find yourself in that situation again, it becomes a little bit easier. Yeah. And you start to find that you don't have to make the conscious decision to do it anymore because it'll become a habit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the goal is getting out of those negative habits that we get so stuck in, just living in these kind of 
fast paced world that we live in um, and starting to reinforce those positive actions and activities so that it becomes easier Mm -hmm. to be more positive and self-encouraging and um, just hopefully happier as a result um, than getting kind of stuck in that rut of Mm self-sabotage. Absolutely. Yeah. You nailed it, girl. (laughs) Um, And then was there something else that you, or did I just, I just like, Oh, I was going to give the example, and so I don't know if they'll be able to just cut this back into that part when I first mentioned about um, hacking into the nervous system and finding something that feels good and pleasurable. And so one of, you know, we do things naturally as children that are soothing. So um, I mentioned sucking the thumb and how that's probably not a great thing to do (laughs) as an adult, but depends on maybe who you're with. Um, But my daughter, uh, she would always rub her ear. Or if if I were holding her, her father was holding her, she would rub our ear when she would start to get tired or just to kind of help calm herself down. (laughs) Yeah, I thought it was really sweet. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, and the ears have you know, a lot of, uh, you know, pressure points and a lot of nerve endings, like acupuncture meridians, if you want to even like get into all of that. So, um, that's interesting little things like, you know, touching Mm -hmm. the ears or holding the ears in certain places. And I think it's just important for people to know that, um, you know, it's less important what the little physical activity is. It's finding something that's comforting to you and then just kind of Reestablishing, reestablishing that little reward habit, mm-hmm. um, and you know, making that decision mm-hmm. that you're going to start changing these negative habits um, and replacing them with things that are more positive. Yeah, more positive, more pleasurable. You know, delight is a word that is a just a delicious word for me. <laughs> and a lot of times when I'm feeling funky, I'll just think, oh. What's delightful? What would delight me in this moment? Mm-hmm. And and then go looking for that. Like, right? Make a game out of that. Right. And notice how your life changes and how, how much more you feel like you're on your own side, you know, that you're on your team and, and getting to those changes that you're up to in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Jules, thank you so much for joining me here today. And I am uh, looking forward to continuing our conversation. This was delightful. (laughs) It was. It was a pure (laughs) delight in every way. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me here. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for listening and tuning in. If you'd like to learn more about Jules, you can visit her at JulesHarrison.com. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for joining us.